Okay, so good morning. Right now it is about 8.17 and I'm on my way to the Old Indian Museum down in uh, Mash, Massachusetts. So a nice hour and 15 minute drive down there. Um, I'm gonna go meet, meet uh, one of my friends who's actually in the article that we read during class about how Mastery Public Schools are offering the first uh, language class, um, specifically the Wampanoag language. So I'm extremely excited. We're gonna go visit the, house, the meeting house. We're gonna interview uh, my friend Nathan Mills. And sadly, Cameron couldn't come on, come on this trip. He was planning on coming and then something happened, but it's okay. Uh, he'll be in the debris video. We're gonna talk about everything. So I just hope you enjoy this vlog. Nice hour, five minute drive. Let's get going. Great, hey, so a little update. So I guess my GPS brought me to the wrong area. So I guess I must have typed in uh, Forte Meeting House in East Falmouth instead of Mashpee. So we're gonna head over to the Old Indian Meeting House now uh, in Mashpee, Massachusetts. So it's a, just a little 12 minute drive, so nothing big. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get on our way. Okay, so I arrived at the Old Indian Meeting House here in Mashpee, as you can see. Uh, I'm in the parking lot right now. Um, so I gotta wait for Nathan. He's gonna come, we're gonna talk uh, about it. He's gonna show me around. I don't think we can get inside because you have to make a reservation a month in advance and they're not even in season to show it. Um, so we're gonna just walk around. Uh, they said I can look through the windows if I please. So that's what the plan is. I'm pretty excited. And yeah, I just gotta wait in my car until he gets here. 1984. Yeah, I wish we could have seen the inside. So this is the church. Yeah, the inside is very small. Yeah. Seats up there. Like a cold school church and seats above me. Okay. Oakley. Yeah, a lot of family in here. I'm related to the Oakleys. I didn't know any of these people, but I'm related to them. I know the last names. Do you guys have an idea of what you're going to do with that other land you have down the street or not yet? We can do anything with it. Janice Smith. This is my grandfather's uh, ex wife. So, what type of events like take place at the meeting house? Funerals mostly. Mostly, this is where the like, burial sites are. Probably. I've only really been here for funerals, but I'm not sure. I don't think it's really used for anything else. Okay. I think it's kind of the last place we see. Spend hours in here looking, trying to look for all your family. It's a common misconception that we're related to everybody. We're not related to everybody. Yeah. We're related to quite a bit. First question to you is how did I know that you guys weren't really affected by westward expansion much, yes. but how has your history like affected you and the tribe in general? Well, I don't do things like normal people. I mean, I hunt. I like to get animals and feed my family. We just got our language back. We got it put in our public school systems, as you guys must know. Um, that was a great thing. We haven't had our language for over a hundred years, and. It's really great to see that the community is starting to care about us more because we really feel like we're not cared about as Native Americans. You can go to any Native American in America and ask them how they feel, how we're treated, and we feel very mistreated. They built that North Dakota pipeline like it was nothing. They just look at it. They just they, they didn't even they, they put it on the news for like two days and then all of a sudden it's built. Yeah, exactly. like, what's up with that? There was no no one intervened. No. They, we are a piece of history that has almost been brushed away. They don't talk about really how they committed acts of genocide. Christopher Columbus, his first act, he came around here. He committed, I think it was 28,000 natives killed. Yeah. He killed 28,000 on just the first time in 1492 when he sailed the ocean blue. He killed 28,000 natives just for fun. Then he came back and killed more. They just really just didn't want us here. We were just a nuisance in the land. They wanted to develop. They wanted gold. And today, even today, it's you don't see it as much. But like I said with the pipeline, it's it's still taking place today. There's still things. You ask, a lot of people don't know much about Indians or Native Americans. I say Indians because 
So that's what people think of us Indians. They don't think of us as Native Americans. Think, thankfully for Jake, he's um, wanting to learn about it. Yeah. It's a great thing to learn about. This is uh, your American history. One of our Socratic seminar questions. So the question that I had to specifically respond to, how was has the relationship between Native Americans and the United States evolved slash change over time? And to what extent does this evolution reflect the identity of each community? When they first started to come over here, like I said earlier, it was genocide. And then people started to gain more mor morality and realize that you can't genocide people. So in the, I think, believe in the early 1900s to the 1950s, they started putting Native American children and taking them from their home and trying to colonize them, teach them the Christian religion, trying to make them dress like uh, white people, trying to cut their hair off. They did all that. And that was only, what, 1950? Ended in the 60s or the 50s. That was only 50 years ago, 60 years ago. That's still pretty modern. That's what they changed from genocide. And basically, they, they would hit the kids. They would make them stop speaking their language, take them all out of their homes. And there was a couple of people in the Mastery Wampanoag tribe that had got taken out of their homes and sent to those homes. But now it's like we're kind of like forgotten about. Back then we, we weren't really forgotten about. They didn't really like us. They just petitioned us and made us look evil and savagely. But now they don't even really talk about us. We're kind of out of the picture. I'd say now it's not even like no one even thinks about Native Americans. There's so many other things that the media is consumed with just distractions from what's really going on. And what does it mean to you to be Native American? It means everything. It's my culture. It's the way I, the way I wake up, the way I dress, the way I present myself. It's everything to me. I mean, it's like, it's my tribe. I've been, it's kind of gotten ourselves into a hole, but I'm in, I want to try to bring the community together and get, get us out of this rut and get us noticed and get us prospering. Because there's a lot of resources we can do around here. All we need is a little bit of federal push because they're restricting us on what we can do there's a lot they restrict us on what we can do we can't even we can't even start our own business with shellfish in it or anything really the government's watching over us and everything and they're making us trying to be like the federal government they make us have a tribal council we have to have a chairman a vice chairman a everything all that government stuff and it's like we never had that why in order to be federally recognized we have to be basically the government yeah how does that separate us from the government and the native americans how does that separate us they're just trying to colonize us still slowly do you think that um when mashpee public schools added your language to and they changed the name from foreign language to world language mm -hmm. do you think that's like anywhere in the step in, in the right direction that other I think that public is, schools should follow? Yes, I think that is in the step in the right direction. So they're starting to give us Native American classes. See, we were taking, we don't even, a lot of kids and a lot of Native Americans nowadays, or at least a lot of Wampadogs I know nowadays, don't even really hunt or fish that much. These are valuable things. These are how we fed our families. We didn't farm, really. We didn't farm like that. We've hunted and fished and, yeah. And a lot of people don't even do that anymore. It's been taken away from us because we have to go to school and we have all these other things going on and we can't even learn our cultural values. But thanks to the language class we're starting to. So in that language class, do you guys just learn the language or do you guys learn about the whole history? Of we learn about the history and the language and how the words tie together with the history. That's good. And then, so what changes would you like to see from the aspect of like the federal government and Massachusetts itself? I'd like to see more independence toward giving towards the tribe. Mm -hmm. Like I'd like to see us being able to maybe get a little more land to maybe cultivate, develop some businesses on, and just have that freedom to start a business and get our tribe some money so we can do something for ourselves. I'm not even asking the government for money. I just want the government to allow us. And then, so when you talk about like starting businesses and like starting housing, is this for like? your tribe you guys want to just be not well, secluded but you guys want to have your own chance of like independence see yes yes um the, yeah the tribal housing tribal housing down there um was supposed to be for people who couldn't really afford housing so that would help there's a lot of people in our tribe who can't afford housing there's a lot of drug abuse in our tribe we have in all tribes across america there's lots of drug abuse they stick us out on the reservations not, not much and the only thing else there to do is just to get drunk and it kills people it's just it's killing all the western tribes it's not as bad here but out west it's horrible so how should we or as americans and someone that's not native american address this history 
do? That's a great question. That's what I've been trying to actually think. Like, how... It's not... You, it's just being aware. And it's like anything. It's like the civil rights movement. Is if you... The white people have really helped African Americans during the civil rights movement. Yeah, they marched, but there was white people that marched with them and realized, hey, this is the right thing to do. If we can get enough people to just vouch for us, then the government can't ignore it. It's all about numbers. That's the biggest thing with anything you want to change in the world is numbers. You have to get the people involved. Not one person can do it. It takes everybody to do it. And then, which parts of your history or just the history of like Native American general are the most important for people that maybe don't know your history to hear? Like, what would you want someone to hear first? Well, let me ask you this. What's the first thing you think of when you hear Native American? Like, well, before... Be honest, I, I can take anything. I'm, I'm a kid. <laughs> well, before I learned about you guys, I think hunting and gathering and, like, feathers on the heads and everything. Yeah, that's that's typical. That's what most people think. And now I think of uh, a group of people being discriminated against that deserve more rights. The image I get when I think of Native American is just peaceful people just living, living life. We just survived. We lived. We loved. We served justice if something was out of place, and it was just easy life wasn't nothing complicated we didn't harm anybody and it was just we just kind of want that peaceful community back this is the handout for guns. and if you had to go through and pick some of the ones i mean maybe they're just not a lot but some that you feel that are not targeted towards or um meant for native americans like kind of like forgetting about you guys which ones are forgetting about Hard, I'd say, like all these kind of fit in to the, to the not involving you guys. Yeah, it's even a qual. Not really. There was nothing really equal about any of America. It's still not that equal. That shows that America is not even close to respecting the Native Americans in general, or no. like the Wampanoag tribe personally. Like America's portrayed that everybody's free, and this is what they're supposed to be getting. But yeah. You guys are not, and that's that's the that's only the point. only for the people they want it to be for. Thank you, Nathan, for letting Thank me interview you. you. I think it's gonna be great, and I'm glad that we have advocates like you. Uh, Thank you for going for it. Thank you guys, so much for uh, checking out our video today. We really appreciate it, and I'm glad that you got to take the journey uh, to Cape Cod with me, and uh, really get to hear what Nathan was saying, what he wants to see in the future, and answering the questions that we got to answer in the Socratic seminar. So we. Um, so in the future uh, to come, we have one more vlog coming out for you that involves transcendentalism and uh, we're going to be doing a little challenge, so I'm excited to start that one and camera will be in that one. But again, thank you so much for watching and peace.